Billy, let's bring in our first guest, Librarian Laurel from Fresno County Library. How's that? <laughs> That's very good. How's, Thank uh, you. Do, do you. You wanted to correct me on your last name. I did. Go it's, ahead and give it to it's me. It's Prisney. Laurel Prisney. I know. There's all kinds of letters in there. You just there basically is. leave out there all is. of the middle ones. That's and okay because you're a librarian. I'm a right? librarian. Can, a lot of letters are good. Uh -huh. So how long have you been a librarian? Um, oh, can I not tell you? It's like 30-some-odd no. years. Wow. I'm old. Right here in Fresno? No, I've been here five years. Where, where are you from? I'm actually from Canada originally. No bad Canadian jokes, please. No, it's okay. <laughs> do, do you know Justin Bieber? No, just kidding. No, uh, no comment. So were you, you, you were a librarian in Canada? Yeah. Is, is, a, is, a, is a Canada library different from a, a U.S. library? Uh, no, not really. Oh, does it have a bunch of French books? There's some. Oh, okay. Yeah, right. probably not as So how, how, did you, how did you make it to Fresno? You know, it's a long story. It's um, okay, we have time. <laughs> That's scary. I uh, went um, to library school, then got a job, and then my husband and I decided the economy was going to tank in Canada. Mm -hmm. Came through with the NAFTA agreement, North American Free Trade. Mm -hmm. Never looked back. I've had great career successes ever since. Most recently, f uh, Phoenix before here. So, know all about heat. I uh, lived, lived in Phoenix for four years and now here for five. How come I didn't know there's a library school? Um, because everybody thinks everybody in a library is a librarian. Well, uh, no, don't, don't you just go to a regular college to become a librarian? Yeah. You do? Yeah, but they call it library school. They call it library school. Yeah. Why is it that you wanted to be a librarian? You know, I've worked in libraries so long before I got my master's that it seemed like the next course, the next step in, in becoming a, a, a professional. I mean, I would worked as a paraprofessional and hit that glass ceiling and the only way to keep going in the field was to go back and get the degree. So, I'm not, I'm not exactly sure I know exactly what a librarian does. <laughs> well, uh, you come in and you ask a question. You may want to know, um, oh, I don't know, how to fix your car. We can actually give you the resources to do that. Electric schematics for the electronics. Mm -hmm. Um, things like that. Maybe you want to know. You have all the Chilton manuals. We've got there. all the Chiltons. Okay. We've got them online. Yeah, and you can you can actually go online and download them and be right in your garage reading them as as you're correcting or fixing your car rather. You're saying online are the are the libraries changing a lot because yes, they of the, are. the computer age, aren't they? They are. I mean, I, do you still have the cards? Oh hell no! It's Sorry. okay. It's okay. You're a librarian. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, no, no. Cards, cards are a long, long way. You know, we've got an online catalog. Everything's electronic now. Um, libraries are changing. You know, our our whole uh, resources. We still have books and materials and magazines and all of that, but we also have all of that online. And our electronic resources are actually used more now than books. Than the, than the paper copies of I things. Bet. Yeah. I bet. Uh, I was flattered to be invited to host a table at last year's yes. dinner at the library. Yes. I, I thought it went over well, and I didn't get a, an invitation this year, and you <laughs> eased my mind because they're not having one this no, year. No, they're okay. not. No, they <laughs> I thought it was me. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you're, you're fine. We didn't get any complaints about you or you anything know, it, like it, that. It was amazing because when I went, I, I, uh, people choose the tables that they want to sit at. Yes. And my uh, theme was, if you're bored in Fresno, it's probably you. <laughs> and so I didn't know what to expect. And here, everyone at my table is probably 70 yeah. or so. Easy. And, and, and they picked my table. I'm like, they must have changed my theme or something. What's that? And, and we had a great discussion about things to do in Fresno. Well, maybe uh, they were looking for some challenges and something new. Well, they got one. <laughs> there, uh, you're changing it up this year a little bit. Is it wine at the? Yeah, we're going to do a wine walk. Um, it's going to have some fancy name. They haven't come up with it yet at Woodward Park Library. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not 100 percent sure when. I think it'll be in the fall, Oct September, October. And the whole idea is that you can drink wine and and um, have some wonderful conversation and food in the library and walk around and in a nice big li library. In a nice that, big that, library. That, that, that library is as library. good as uh, as any library yeah. I've seen in California. Yeah. It's it's truly um, our diamond. And do, do you work it, out of that one? No, I, I work downtown. I work at the the. I love the downtown. The Central one. Library. I love yeah. the downtown one. Yeah. So, uh, what what kind of things do you, does the library have coming up? 
You well, have you know, right now, uh, right now, what's really exciting, if you're um, into our big read, it's going for a month now, uh, and we're in the height of it right now. We just had a speakeasy last weekend, which was very, very well attended at um, Fresno City College. We are having today, if you're interested, you can um, delve into the mind of a psychopath. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, like I haven't done that before. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you'd like that yeah. at Woodward Library this afternoon. Uh -huh. Um, this is the big read we do once a year. We're in our ninth year. It's funded by the National Endowment for the Arts. This year's book is uh, The Maltese Falcon by mm. Dashiell Hammett, nice. which was the, f um, really, it's considered still the definitive uh, model for how detective fiction gets written, and it was written back in the 20s. And um, Dashiell Hammett's granddaughter, Julie Rivet, I think is her name, is giving a talk uh, to talk about what it was like um, with her grandfather. All kinds of really cool events right now on that for anyone from little children all the way up to adults. They're even doing some really funky games this year. One of them is a letterbox game where you go and get clues at various libraries and you can solve a crime and you can actually interface with um, Archer, the the um, one of the characters in the in the book. And then one thing That's they're fun. doing, yeah, and then they're doing something called uh, geocaching which, you know, you guys who are on the internet would understand this. If you've got a GPS and a, and a smartphone, you can actually do, it's like a treasure hunt game. Mm -hmm. And um, it's called geocaching, and it's something the library's never done before. So, again, that move into technology to attract um, the younger crowd. So. And, that, and that's what you guys are, are, you are doing. Yeah. That's your goal a little bit, yeah. isn't it? To, yeah. to get the younger crowd. Well, and when it, you say younger is. crowd, you're not, you don't I mean children, that, do you? Oh, or yeah. do you mean the 20s, no. 30s, it, well, 40s? Everybody. I mean, really, the library serves a cross-section of society, and we serve everybody from birth, pre-birth, all the way up to to you know the as far as you go, um, and I was going to say nearly dead, but I didn't think that was appropriate. But it's I said okay. it. I said it. Uh, so um, <laughs> for little kids, the whole idea is to get them ready for school. So um, we've got programs for zero to five, things like teaching your little girl how to put the round peg in the round hole. Mm -hmm. So a lot of tactile things. We've got what are called early learning centers that help with that and help mom and dad work with the child and develop that sensory learning. And then we've got um, programs to get the kids reading on grade level by grade three because we know that if they can read properly at grade three, they are going to become a success in school and high school and they won't necessarily be in jail because we know that the jail and the prison beds are done by the number of people who are um, under the grade level of three. The average grade reading level in prison is three. So third grade. Third grade. So wow. if you think about that, you're barely putting sentences together. So I mean, it kind of makes sense. So we're all about literacy. We want to keep the teens. You know, we've got stuff for them after school during those hours when mom and dad may not be home, right. and we want to make sure that they're um, well engaged and you know doing productive things. And then of course, yeah, um, for the older crowd, things like the geocaching for the twenty somethings, um, book clubs, you name it, we've got it. If you if you have an interest in in learning of any kind, the library's the place to be. It's not just books either, is it? Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Books is like the this part of all of the other things. We've got more programs and services. We'll help you if you're a veteran with, with services to get you connected to all the various government um, programs that are available. We've got, as I said, the programs for the kids. You name it. We're there. Awesome. Yeah. Okay, Laurel. It was very nice talking to you. Thank you. It was you. a pleasure. I, I, I love what you guys Fun. are doing with the zoo. Fun. Thank you for coming. All right. We're going to take a quick commercial break, and we'll be right back. Stick around.